time such as this. And we that came with expecting hearts, as you teach us in the book of Revelation, the time that they had to spend, preparations, digging deep into the word of God, as you have downloaded to him, we as your people, we are sitting with open hearts to receive. Bless him further in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Last week we were talking about the church in Sardis, right? How many of us remember we were talking about the church in Sardis? And one of the things we said they were doing was that they, the world got into the church. Amen? Right? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The, Jesus Christ said something about that church. Um, one of the things he said was that he said I'm trying to he says there was few people in that church amen that had not defiled amen that had not defiled their garments amen and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Amen? And I said something last week, that that garment, it represents something. How many of us remember that? Sorry? Good, amen? Someone is paying attention, amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So it represents the righteousness of God. Amen. And you know that one thing that cannot, one of the things that can, when we put a garment on, um, we don't talk about the garment of garment here. He's talking about righteousness. And we're talking about righteousness in the sense that our righteousness is from Christ. Amen. Amen. If it is from Christ, then it cannot be defiled. But if we bring our own righteousness into it and clothe ourselves with our own righteousness, amen, we know that that garment, <laughs> amen, is definitely defiled. That was why God had to impute the righteousness of God into our own account. Amen? I want to show us something in Isaiah before I move on. One of those things I didn't relate to you last week was one of these scriptures. Isaiah chapter, I think it's Isaiah chapter 63. Amen? Isaiah chapter 63. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me here. Thank you, Jesus. The owner. Sorry? I said 63, yeah? No, not that one. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I think I've got the wrong chapter. But I'll find it now. It's somewhere. Okay. Let's go back. Yes, sorry, 61. 61. Are we all there? 61 verses 10. I'm going to read it from two different versions, but let me, let's read it from 61 verses 10. It says, what? Are we what? Greatly, are we greatly rejoice? What? In the Lord, 
My soul shall be joyful in my God, for what he has, or he clothed me with what? The garment of salvation. Amen? And has what? Covered me with the what? Robe of righteousness. Amen? As a what? Bridegroom decks himself with ornament, and as a bride adorns herself with Joel. For as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. Amen? If you notice that's those two scriptures, it was the Lord doing everything. Amen? It wasn't our own righteousness. It was the righteousness of God. So when the Lord says they are defiled, that you have not defiled your garment, he was saying that their trust was solely on Christ. Amen? Not in their works. Although we have to, but we, we know that um, there is fruit of righteousness. Amen? Don't get me wrong. I'm not really um, against good works. Amen. Don't 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 get me wrong. I'm not against good works. Good works are good, especially when it springs forth from the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen? Because that's what it says. As the earth, what look at what he says. He says, as the earth brings forth its bud, and as the garden causes the thing that is sown in it to spring forth. Amen. He says, so the Lord God will cause righteousness. To what? And praise to spring forth before all nations. So our righteousness is a seed that God had planted in our hearts. And it must bring forth fruit. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we notice in the book of Galatians. If we look at Galatians. Let's open our book to Galatians. I want to show some few things here. Galatians. Is it, what am I looking at here? This is okay. So the Ephesians, what I'm reading here, okay. Galatians chapter two. Galatians chapter two. Look at what it says there. It says, then after fourteen years, chap, I'm reading from verses one. Galatians chapter two, verses one. It says, then after fourteen years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, and also took Titus with me. And I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. But privately to those who were of reputation, reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to circumcision. And this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in, who came in by stilt to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Notice what he's saying here. You know, you would think when somebody wants to bring you into bondage, you would think they will come in like a way that it will be so obvious. But I want you to watch how these people were going to bring the church into bondage. Then he goes, to whom we did not yield submission, even for an hour. Look, at Paul was so, he says, even for one hour, we did not even submit to them. Carry on. Let's carry on reading. He says that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. 
But from those who seem to be something, whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. God shows personal favoritism to no man. For those who seem to be something added nothing to me. But on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcision had been committed to me as the gospel for the circumcised was to Peter. For he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me towards the Gentiles. What I'm, I'm just, let me just give you an, what he's talking about here. When he was talking about the circumcised and the uncircumcised, he's talking about the Jews. He says, Peter was called to preach the gospel to the Jews, and I was, he was called to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. So when he was saying uncircumcised, because when God actually, he was talking from the law, that when God, first of all, had a covenant with Abraham. He said that all the Jewish children, first child, um, every child, every male child, had to be circumcised. So that was what he meant by the circumcision. And the uncircumcision is the Gentiles because they were not, they didn't have that belief system. That was why when David saw Goliath, he says, who are you, uncircumcised Philistine? Because he was not a Jew. And because of that covenant they had with the Gentiles, I mean with the Jews, Paul, I mean, David was able to face Goliath and say, who are you, this uncircumcised Philistine? Because God will never favor you over me. So when David met Goliath, he met him with revelation. And that was why he was able to overcome him. So now, this was what Paul was trying to say here. He says, I have been called to the uncircumcised, which is the Gentiles. Peter is called to the Jews. Amen? So I just wanted to give you that background. He says, for he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised, that is the Jew, also worked effectively in me towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived that the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas, the right hand of fellowship, that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. They desired only that we should remember the poor, the very thing which I also was eager to do. Now, when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. He said James was the pastor in Jerusalem. He was, you know, in the beginning when they first accepted the gospel, they never believed that the gospel was to the Gentiles. So if you read the book of Acts, you will see that the church in the book of Acts, they were a baby church. They were getting to understand what Christianity is because they had not received the revelation that the gospel was to the Gentiles. They still had the thought, they had the, the old way of thinking because the law was given to the Jews. So they never looked at it that it's going to be for the Gentiles. It was until Acts chapter 8, I think, when... Um, Peter went to preach to Cornelius in his house. Cornelius is not a Jew. That was the first Gentile that gave his heart to Christ. But after he gave his heart to Christ, they had to call a council meeting and call Peter. Why did you go to the Gentiles to go and preach the gospel? Don't you know that these people are, we are not supposed to have anything to do with them? So they still had the mentality of the law. So Peter had to explain that I was having a fast one day and the Lord revealed to me that I have to go to this man's house. And that was how they started believing that, okay, they can go and preach the gospel to the Gentiles. But here, Paul, um, Paul is saying that certain man came from James. That was from the church in Jerusalem. And, you know, they still had the cultural belief in them. 
that they don't really want, they still, they still kind of, it's still something that they still had with them. Like, we don't want to have anything to do with the Gentiles. We can't eat with them because they're so engrossed in the law. Remember when Jesus Christ was sitting with the publican and he was eating, the, the Pharisee says, why would you be eating with these people that eat from the dirty cup? And Jesus Christ says, no, it's not about the outside of the cup, but it's what is inside. Amen? So I'm just giving you a background to this. So now, it says here, now when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. For before certain man came from James, he would sit, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. He was fearful of the Gentiles, I mean the Jews. You know, we've received Christ, a new covenant. Now, because you've seen the Jewish people come and you were eating with the Gentiles, then because you saw them coming, you had to run away. I say, hey, I don't want to have anything to do, pretending as if they were still in the law. Because the law, you couldn't have the gent the law was not given to the Gentiles at all. It was given to the Jews. So you had to convert to the Jewish religion before you are taken in. Amen? So look at what Peter was doing here. He says, here, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Verses, okay. Verses what? Verse 13 says, and the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite. You see what he's calling them here. He said they played the hypocrite with him so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. He says, but when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, if you being a Jew, Live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jew. Why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? We, we who are Jews by nature are not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Amen? So these people, they're trying to be justified by the works of the law. They, they, basically, they're saying, because they came to bring bondage onto the people that are already free by faith in Christ. So they decided that they wanted to introduce the law to the Gentiles. Like, they have to succumb to the law of Moses. So he's now saying here, amen, he's saying, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. You know what it means by those things that I destroy? Is the law. He's talking about. Because when Christ was crucified, they said, the Bible says that he crucified, he, he, the law also was crucified with him. That means we became dead to the law. And now alive unto Christ Jesus. Now, it says, what I have destroyed, if I bring it back up again, I become a transgressor to it. So this is what is happening. This is why Jesus Christ says, some of them, they've defiled. Some people, you have not defiled your garments. That means that you're solely putting your trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ and not in your own righteousness. Amen? So some, some of the church, some of, this, some of this church, and let me tell you, one of the church that we in this day that we can relate to that is the Roman Catholic. 
You have to go, you have to look at some of their doctrines. The Roman Catholic. You've got to pray to Mary. There are certain things you have to be confirmed by the, by the um, priest. You have to confess in a box before you are counted righteous. So you see now you're defiling your garment because the only garment that we should be wearing is the righteousness of Christ. Amen? Amen? So you see where I'm coming from now. So this is why Paul withstood Peter. Peter the pillar, one of the pillars of faith. You see, he was carried away. Even Barnabas was carried away. It's like, oh, I think they, they just got carried away. That, you know what? We don't want to have anything to do with Jetta. Why? Because they saw some Jewish believers came through and they're like, no, they're here. You know when some bishop come and visit us and we want to kind of like, hey, you know, I'm, just, I'm just using that. Like, if, you know when we have visitors, then you're like, oh, you know, we have to, comf- you have to compose ourselves and look nice, amen? But in this case, they came to visit the Galatian church and they decided that, oh, they're here. The top guys are here. Let's abstain from them. Let them not see us eating with the Gentiles. As if God was going to count that against them for eating. So they had, they had, they've got their own standard of righteousness and wanting to live by that. So look at what he says again. He says, for if I build again those things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law died to the law. So when we, when we identify with death, we are identifying with the death of Christ on the cross. Amen? It's an identification. You identify with the death of Christ and also identify with the resurrection of Christ. Because if you don't, re- if you don't identify with the death of Christ, you can't identify with the resurrection of Christ. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, it says here, for I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have what? Been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. The life I live now in the flesh, I live by faith on the Son of God who's loved me and given himself for me. So as a Christian, as born again Christian, always identify that the nature that can control you or that can lead you to hell, Christ already took it out. Amen? He nailed it to the cross. Amen? And now that you receive Christ, you have a new life already in you. Amen? You don't start asking God, God, make me righteous. He has already made you righteous. If you look at the scripture, from, if you um, go and read 2 Corinthians 5, 21, the Bible says, for he made him who knew no sin to become sin for you, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So on that cross, we identify with him. When he was buried, we were buried with him. And when God raised him from the dead, we were raised together with him. And that's why we can say that now we are seated with him in heavenly places far above all principality and power. Don't try to be what you already are. That's, the, that's what the enemy uses all the time. That's how he makes you think. You see, if you don't know that you already have something, then you don't have that ability to overcome what comes against you. But when you know that you're already in Christ, you can say to the enemy when it comes against you, says, look, it's like I was watching a movie. Very, it's a Nigerian movie, a Christian movie. Um, normally, um, in Nigeria culture, they believe that um, most these people, they kind of like, um, they, they, um, they practice necromancy. And um, this is a powerful occult in Nigeria. And one of the ways they do is that they, they want to, if they want to kill somebody, they have a way. As long as you can step on the floor, as long as you drink water, 
they will get you. The only way you can escape is if you are a child of God. So they have this, um, this um, um, pot, put water in it, they can see you if they want to see you and do whatever they want to do to you while you're sleeping. That is it's, it's something they do in the occult. And in this case, this man was a born, he, he, was, he used to practice things like that. So he became born again. And the people in his village, they didn't like it because he was always praying. He was always disturbing, disturbing all their works. So they decided to call him while he was asleep. And as they called him, he got up in his sleep. He says, and he answered back. He said, the person that you are calling died 2,000 years ago. This one is a new one. You don't have the power to get him anymore. That was what he was answering from his spirit man. He says, the one you are calling is not that person that you knew. This one is a newborn child. That was what he was saying. So that's what I'm saying. That's what, you see, the only, the only ground the enemy has against you is the old man. Right. Amen? Amen? Is the old man, not the new man. The new man cannot be touched by the enemy. Amen? So you've got to know the sort of power that you carry. You're a newborn child. Those are the scriptures that you need to declare. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but not I who live. The one you're calling, the one the enemy wants to attack, it's not the one that is alive now. It's a new one in Christ, clothed dead in the righteousness of God, not in my own garments. Amen? That's what I was just trying to illustrate. So when Jesus Christ was saying that, you still kept my name, and your garment has not been defiled. It means that you're solely looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So you have to know. Let me tell you something. You know, witches and wizards, yes, they do pray against the church, against men of God. But these things shouldn't scare us. Amen? If you know who you are. In fact, if you understand what happens when you're on your knees and when you pray. And when you see what happens in the kingdom of darkness, if God opens your eyes to see, you would always want to remain praying because you disconfit all their plans and their purpose. Do you know the reason why you are alive today, you're still alive today? Do you know how many times they've tried? Do you know how many times the enemy has tried against your life but couldn't succeed? Do you know why you, you, you overcame? Because you're a new man in Christ. You got the Holy Spirit, the most powerful person in the entire universe lives inside of you. Amen. The one that created all things lives inside of you. The only way the enemy will get you is to make you feel like you are not that person. He will come and say, oh, are you sure God said, just like Eve, and make you doubt who you are. So you've got to know who you are. Amen? Amen. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen? Amen? So let's carry on. It says, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness came through the law, then Christ died in vain. Chapter 3. Now, Paul is still talking to this people. He says, oh foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? You know, see, so, so you have to understand what it means to obey the truth. Obeying the truth is believing the word. If you believe right, you will live right. Amen? You've got to believe right. He's saying here, why are you guys, why are you going back? To that, why are you going back there? Why did you stand in Christ? And what you, mean, you know what bewitchment means? Bewitchment means that it's a very strong word to use. When you say somebody has been bewitched, that means they have been deceived by an enemy. 
He says, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. You see, he's emphasizing on the crucifixion. That old man died a long time ago. Don't identify with the old man anymore. When you start feeling like you want to smoke weed or you want to do things or you want to walk in lust, remember. Say, hey, I cannot live like that anymore. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. You've got to say it. You've got to say it to yourself. You've got to declare it unto yourself. And that feeling leaves. You've got to understand. Because it's the flesh trying to raise up his ugly head again. You've got to put the flesh back. You say, hey, I died 2,000 years ago. I died 2,000 years ago. If you read Romans chapter 6, you see, these are, these are really, these are scriptures you use for spiritual warfare. It says, you are dead to sin and are life unto God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? It's a powerful thing. That's why it says the cross is the power of God. Because Jesus Christ took that life, that Satan, that, that, that ground, that enemy, the enemy will use. Because what the Bible says, to whom you submit yourself into, to him you become a servant to. So when Adam obeyed Satan, he became a servant. And when we were born, we were born in this image. So we inherited what he had. We become a servant to Satan. But when Christ came and took our place in that cross, that man that was submitted to Satan died on the cross. So there's no ground for him anymore to your life. You can say, hey, no. Always speak the word of God. Always declare it. When you know the truth, declare it over yourself. Amen? Hallelujah. Because, yes, the enemy will keep trying. There are memories. Your five senses has memories. There are things you use your five senses to do before you became born again. Those things will try to pop his head up. You say, hey, no, 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 no. There is a new person occupying this body. It's a new person in Christ Jesus. Amen? So these are the truths. These are realities. That is, um, that's our, uh, our new creation realities. Amen? People might tell you you're weird. It's like, yes, I'm happy to be weird. Oh, you think I'm weird? I think you might be weird too. <laughs> because... This is reality for me. You might think my reality is weird to you, but how what makes you think I'm weird? <laughs> it's a new creature. God tells you that this is who you are. And I believe God. I'd rather believe, let God be true and let every man be a liar. Amen? Amen? You know, some people, they've got Bibles under their arms and they say, I need a word from God. And they've got Bible under their arms. Please give me a word. It's like, oh, yes, I'm sick. I need a word from God. Oh, yes. They come to you and say, oh, yes, the Bible says, by his stripes, you are healed. And they say, no, 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 not that one. I mean, I need a, a, a word for now. What they're saying is, they don't acknowledge the word. What the word says about you is who you are. When you open it, when you see it, it's yours. Amen? So these churches, they've gone ahead to do their own thing, but God found some people in there that they kept their trust in Christ. Their righteousness was not defiled. You know, if you can trust, if you can believe like this, let me tell you, your life, your Christian life will go from here to here to here to here to here. You just find yourself going up and up and up because your foundation is on the word. Amen? Your foundation is on the word. I, 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 look, let me tell you, even the best of my ability, even the best that I can be, 
it's not enough. It's not compared to the righteousness of Christ. So I, no matter how much people raise you up and praise you, because first of all, the enemy likes it, it's a good thing when people actually praise you because it's not you trying to praise yourself. It's a good thing. But don't let it get to your head. Because the enemy will try to let you want it. Oh, yes, now, now. You, then you now say, oh, you know what? I, I know so much of the word of God. I don't need to pray anymore. I don't even need to study the word anymore. I don't, hey, you know, I'm okay. You know? So now you start looking at yourself. You have to be careful of that. So you have to keep looking at it unto Jesus. The better you become, the more you look into him. The moment you take your eyes off, that was what Eve did. Took her eyes off the Lord. And the enemy got him. Amen? Your righteousness is the righteousness of God. It is that the power. You can stand against the enemy. With that power, with that truth. When sickness hits your body, you say, hey, sickness actually is a result of the fall. So the way you hate sin, you have to hate sickness and diseases. Amen? You have to hate it. If we pray, if you don't even see the manifestation straight away, don't worry. Keep your eyes on the word. Keep trusting the word. Say, Lord, I thank you. I might not feel it. I don't walk by my feeling, but I know I'm healed. I'm better. I'm well. In the name of Jesus, this sickness is not going to kill me. No, I'm going to die in a full age. I will die when I'm ready to go with the Lord. I will go and meet the Lord. Not sickness. No, I refuse that in Jesus' name because Jesus paid for it on the cross. He paid for it all. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter. Even though you're using your medication, don't give up. Stand on the word. <laughs> Amen. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what you were saying now I spoke to one of my residents today and she's from the church next door I'm not going to mention names and um, she said to me she's given up she's given up now you know because she's quite in a bad state so I said to her you know God as your savior you can't give up now you have to speak life into this situation Life, you have to speak now. Amen. But yeah, exactly what you were saying. Amen. So we thank God for that, you know. Praise God. Amen. You've got to stick to the word. What God says you are is what you are. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? That you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you. That only... And this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by what? If you, are you reading it? It says, did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or what? By the hearing of faith. Right. Amen. Then he goes, are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Can you see that? But these people that were coming to the church, they, what they were trying to do is not actually trying to encourage them to sin. No. They were trying to say, you know what? You know that Ten Commandments? These are good things because the law, the law is holy, but the Bible says that we are carnal. The law was to lead us to Jesus. Because God's standard is so high. In fact, if the law could save us, Jesus wouldn't need to come. <laughs> Amen? The law would have been the level, the, the, the standard for righteousness. But God knows that. No way. There's no way. You know, when God gave the law, God told the children of Israel, they said, they said ah, whatever you tell us, we will do. I said, okay, Moses, come up here. Let's give them the law. <laughs> give them the law. The first day, <laughs> the first day, Moses only went up for 40 days. 
By the time it got there, they had already broken the first one. <laughs> they broken the first one. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So the law is to, is to lead us to Christ. Because without Christ, we can do nothing. So he had to come and represent mankind. Mankind sinned. Mankind had to come. So if you notice, when Adam sinned, were you there? When he sinned? No. But was that sin imputed to you? Okay. So what makes you think? What makes you think that you have to do something for the righteousness of Christ? Jesus Christ paid for it. He says, by one man, sin entered the world. And by one man, righteousness. So you were not there when Adam sinned, but you were a sinner because, you, because you, you, were, um, you were in him, in Adam. So now that you are in Christ, you see that? That righteousness, just as sin was imputed to you, righteousness has been imputed to you too. Can you see that? So what you do, you see, when man try to, when man try to, um, when man try to, through his own righteousness, try to please God by his own righteousness, what would happen is that he can start good, well, but because he's in the flesh, all of a sudden, along the way, he just suddenly finds out that. He just finds himself in some way that he never finds himself. He just finds himself actually doing the same thing he has been criticizing for, so, for a long time. Doing the same thing. You know how many, how many people, you, you look, and God always does, does it in a way that when a man begins to trust in his own self, he doesn't know. The Holy Spirit stands back. And he's watching. The guy would not even know that the Holy Spirit is watching. He's not involved anymore. The moment you start to do things in your own strength, because you're saying to the Holy Spirit, hey, sit back. I'm okay. I can take, I can, I can go do this now. So you now see somebody starts well. And he's going then all of a sudden, because of the praise, because of the wonderful healing power that has happened through their ministry, they now begin to look unto themselves. That's why you see so many, some people, some great men of God, all of a sudden they fall. It's not, it's, it's not that they wanted to do that. No. But it's the flesh. The flesh turns on you. It's very subtle. It, very, it just spins on you so quickly before you, because you're so deep in it. So the sole very thing that you criticize, you all of a sudden find yourself in it. Then all of a sudden they now cry to God, Lord, help me. But thank God for his grace. He brings them up again. He says, now, we're going to walk together in this one. So one step after the other, we are walking together. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to be, we have to be, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. When you wake up in the morning, Lord, I thank you for your righteousness. I thank you that not my own works, but by your righteousness. I know you're going to keep me from falling. You're going to help me. Thank you, Lord, for your righteousness. You're constantly depending on his righteousness. And because of that, the Holy Spirit will carry you through because your faith is in the righteousness of Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So he, he began to say to them, he says, look, he says, haven't you, he says, you began, he says, um, are you being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain. Therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracle among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are of the faith are sons of Abraham. 
So you're a son of Abraham, not by natural birth anymore. You're a son of Abraham by faith in Jesus. Amen? You're blessed because of Christ. Christ engrafted you into that blessing. Amen? And the scripture say, the scripture, it says, and the scripture, foreseeing that God justifies the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand. You know when the Bible says Abraham believed God and it was accounted for him for righteousness? People say, but it's, you, you, you think it's just believing God. No, it's not because the Bible says he believes in God and he trembles. So it's not just believing in God. Some people say, I believe in God. What exactly do you believe in God? The Bible says God preached the gospel to Abraham before, which means that what Abraham believed was that in him, in his seed, shall all nations be blessed. That seed is Jesus. So he believed in Jesus even before Jesus was born. So when God said, in your seed, that seed was Jesus. In him shall all nations be blessed. So Abraham believed that. He didn't just believe God. Amen? He believed that the seed that would come out of him, while he looked as if that he couldn't have a child, but he believed that that seed that's where the whole world will be blessed. So Abraham technically believed Jesus. That's why when you see some people, they come to us, I believe in God. Okay. Islam, I believe in God. Really? Okay. What exactly do you believe? It doesn't matter how nice it sounds. It doesn't matter how much they call the name of God. If you don't believe the gospel, you're doomed. That gospel is what God says. God says, in your seed shall all nations be blessed. It is in Christ Jesus. Not in anything else. Only in Christ Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. So when you're telling people about Jesus, make sure you're emphasizing Jesus. Um, and for the youth, when you're reading the scriptures, old, new, make sure you look for Christ in it. Christ is everywhere in the scriptures. It's, in the gen- it's from Genesis to Revelation. Find him, he's in there. When you talk about coming out of Egypt, it's like coming out of the world into a land that God promised. You come out of the world into a new kingdom, isn't it? So you leave the world you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He says, for he has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. Darkness is Egypt. Into the kingdom of his dear son. You're into Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So all along in from Genesis, God had been telling that story about the Savior. Hidden in the old. Revealed in the new. Amen? So always look for him. If you find him, if you ask the Holy Spirit, you find him in there. You find Jesus everywhere in the scripture. Yes? Any question? Yes? I'm, I'm stopping now. <laughs> let's, let's, let's take some questions. Okay. Yes. Um, I heard from one person that was a youth here at one point. Mm-hmm. We were talking and the person said that they did not know after coming to this church for a long time, they did not know why Christ died mm. until they left and they went somewhere else. That's when they really heard the reason for Christ coming or Christ dying for us. Okay. And I was like, no, 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 no. I said, Pastor Gabriel, <laughs> every single chance he gets, he will tell you that. So how did you miss that? You know, wow. so as you said, we have to look for Christ Amen. in things. And we have to listen. We don't just come to church mm. for coming to church sick. Mm. But we have to listen to the word. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. 
Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? We've got 10 minutes for questions. Anybody? Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Bishop, uh, Bishop, I, I'm pretty sure you're with me on this one. <laughs> when you were talking about fallen um, people in ministry that fall because of like lust, for example, mm. and you said it's not their choice, is that what you said? No, 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 I never said. You see, everything we do um, is a choice we make, but yeah, yeah. before we make that choice, it to stem from a wrong belief system. Mm. We always make choices, whatever yeah. we do. No matter, what, no matter what sin we commit, it's something um, you, you would do because you're making that choice. But you, know, you look at something like, the reason why a lot of people commit sin is because they don't have a revelation that they have authority over it. So they need, they, are, they need to renew their mind. Sometimes they would have that revelation, but after so many years, they, that, I think there's a way that, the, you know, the enemy always deceive you. It would deceive you. Sometimes you would have preached certain words. Sometimes because you've preached it so much, you start to despise that word. That it doesn't make, it doesn't have as power as when you first receive that revelation. Because you become complacent. You get what I'm saying? So everybody makes that choice. No matter what, everybody makes a choice. Whatever choice they make, they're making it. Um, if you're going to receive Jesus Christ, you, 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 you make that choice. If you're going to do something, most times they know, okay, you know what? God will forgive me. Then they go ahead and do it. But actually, when they now do it, they say God will forgive me. What they've done is they've given the enemy a foothold. So now it's like addiction. It's like you've been away from something for a very long time. Then you take a little bit of this thing. So now you think, oh, because that's how the enemy would, would address it. would dress it very nice. Oh, but you can ask for forgiveness. See? Then you do it. God will forgive you, but you will have to, you will have to fight the enemy because you've given him that photo. Once you give him a photo, what, do you know what he's going to do? He's going to afflict your body. <laughs> he will afflict, because he says, he says, he who commits, he says there's a sin against the body. There's a sin against the body. What you're doing, what you're, when you sin against your body, what it is is that you have, what your body is supposed to be doing for God, because you've sinned against it, it's going to take, you might have to take a sabbatical, get away, and go and seek God. You know, can, you know um, Esau and Jacob, the Bible says he sought to be back to God with tears. So you're going to have to fight that battle again. Where you failed, you will fight that battle and you have to win it. Amen? You're going to have to fight that battle again because it's, it will keep coming to you until you overcome it. You have to overcome It's like test and trial. You won't go. You see, when it comes to God testing, when, God is, when, you're, when you're going... You see, you won't go further until you leap over that wall. Amen? Because if the enemy knows that he can get you in a certain way, guess what? It's like a boxer. Once he's boxing you, then he see a cut on your face. Hey, that's it. He will keep punching you. That's what the enemy, once he sees that you're weak in one area, he will come at you. So you have to fight that fight. If you're going to say, okay, if God has, for, God has forgiven you, but you have to fight that fight of faith. In that area, you say, in the, you have to stick to it and overcome it and get rid of it. You can do it, but be ready because the enemy will come for you in that area. They'll come to you in that area. And that's why you see so many people, sometimes when they fall in an area, it's very hard for them to get up again. So you have to know, hey, you're like, hmm, am I ready to face this battle? 
I'd rather not do it so that I don't have to face that battle. I would rather pray than to be a prey. You get that? I would rather pray than to be a prey to the enemy. You know, when Eve missed it, he capitalized on it. And that's what the enemy, he never gives you something for free. So be watchful. He says, be watchful. Be vigilant. For the enemy is, is like a roaring lion. Seeking whom to devour. So he's, he's crouching. Just looking for an, a loophole to get in. So you've got to know him. You've, he says, do not, be, do not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. One of the tactics of, um, 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 you know, when you have a soldier, I mean, I mean when you have um, an army, when one of the things they, they, what the way, one of the things that will determine their victory is intelligence. They've got to understand the enemies. They've got to know what they are capable of. So that's what Paul was saying. Do not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Walk by intelligence and don't give him any room. If you notice there is an area in your life that you're struggling with, find somebody that you can be accountable to. While you're praying to God, find somebody that you can be that will tell you the truth. They will tell you off, they will tell you the truth. You see, you've got to have people in your life that you are accountable to. So you, you, when, you're, when you're going through certain things in your life and you know that you, <laughs> this thing is just go meet that person, speak to them. Pray, let them pray with you. And they will give you some tasks that you have to, um, okay, they're checking on you, they're watching, they're making sure that, you know, be accountable. Let them know. Don't try to hide it. You see, once you hide something, you're saying to that thing that, yes, I want you because you're keeping it. But when you expose it, the enemy, because the enemy likes to walk in the dark. So he would like to want you to be to, to cover things up so that he can he can work on it. But when you come out and say, hey, look, you come out proper openly, he knows he's lost his grip. So there's nothing you're hiding. Amen? But make sure you have people that you can trust and be accountable to them. Amen. Yes, any other question? Did I answer your question? I was going to lead on to about like free, free will. People yeah, okay, have free, free will. That of course, free. yes, yes. People have free will. We all have free will. Yeah. How do we die to our flesh if we're alive? Like, how do we properly do it? Because it confuses me. Okay, good question. Good question. Good question. Okay, let's open our Bibles. First Corinthians chapter 9. Let's read from verses 24. Are we there? Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate. That means temperate, they mean self-control. Yeah? Is temperate what? In what? All things. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus, I fight, not as one that beats the air. But what? I discipline my what? My body. And what? Bring it into subjection, lest... When I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. 
You see, it's discipline. Evie, it's discipline. It's discipline. You've got to make sure that, for example, um, if you know, I think one of the things we learn in Bible school, Bishop, is um, one of the things like, if you know, I think Brother James, I think they taught us something like that in Rema, that if you have an area, everybody has their area of weaknesses, every single person. So, <laughs> you know, I have my areas of weaknesses. Everybody have their areas of weaknesses. So don't put yourself don't expose yourself to that area of weakness. If you know that there are certain things in your life, constantly ask God for help. And as well as you're asking God for help, now walk with God concerning that area. So both of you are working together. You know, the, whatever work we do in life, we're working with the Holy Spirit. So you're not passively obeying God. You're not doing like, oh, God is definitely going to help me then you kind of like go on a, <laughs> you know, but you have to discipline yourself. With the help of God, avoid anything that would lead you astray. You understand? Avoid it with the help of God. I'm saying it with, with the help of God because you are going to need it. Amen? You're going to need it. You avoid it with the help of God. You pray. And also the word of God can straighten you out, Evie. The word of God, Evie. The word of God. The word of God, Evie. The word of God. Let's assume you're, st you're, 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 you're struggling with a particular habit. Find somewhere in the Bible that talks about it. And read about it. Just read about it. You know, um, like when people suffer with, when the people are, they've got problems with the lost. Go and read about David and Bathsheba. Read about it. Read about how he did what he did. How he turned back to God and how he abstained from stuff. But also he had to be, sometimes also when you do certain things, you bear the consequences of it. Even though God has forgiven you, <laughs> there are some consequences that you have to go through. You get what I'm saying? So, all those things you have, to, you have to read them. What does Proverbs, read the book of Proverbs. Proverbs talks so much about so many areas. If you want wisdom in life, go and study the book of Proverbs. Read one chapter every day. It's got 31 chapters, is it? So, one for every day in the month. And if you want to, that's, that's, if you want wisdom about life, go and read it. Amen. And I'm going to leave it now. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet. We will move down to the, we will move to the next church next week. I just wanted to be, I think last week, I just felt I needed to explain a little bit about self-righteousness and the righteousness of Christ. Amen. We have to look to Jesus all the time. Amen. And that was what John was talking about, Jesus Christ was talking about how these people hadn't defiled their garment. Their man, they were not self-righteous. They were, they, they were more on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. And once you depend on the righteousness of Christ, you will see the fruit of it. Amen? Father, we thank you tonight. We give you praise. We bless your holy name, Lord. Father God, we just ask for your mercy tonight. If there's any way in our lives that we have been self-righteous, Lord, have mercy. Lord, we ask for mercy. May we continue to look to you until you come. May our eyes be fixed on you, O oh Lord. We thank you for what you did on the cross. We thank you that you rose again. We thank you that you... We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We give you all the glory, Lord. We thank you Satan has no power over us. And I pray today anybody in this place that the enemy has been tormented for years in their life concerning a habit, concerning lust. Father, we thank you because you nailed all those things to the cross. This thing has no dominion or power over them anymore. 
I pray in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that spirit, that unclean spirit, that spirit of lust. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to let go in the name of Jesus. For it is written, for whom the Son set free is free indeed. I declare freedom. I declare deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus, the overcame by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. Now, Lord, I thank you that they have been crucified with Christ. And nevertheless, they live. But not them anymore, but Christ that liveth in them. The life they live now in the flesh, they live by faith in the Son of God, who has loved them and given himself for them. Lord, I thank you that right now from this moment, they yield their members unto Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, whatever it is that has been tormenting their life, causing them to walk in ungodliness, Lord, today, even us, even us, our lives, any area that we have been walking in all God on godliness. Lord, we thank you for a release, for deliverance right now in Jesus' name. Set us free, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise. We thank you for what you have done on the cross for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's share the grace and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. I am the head and not the tail. I am armed and dangerous, unstoppable and unmovable with the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, no weapon that is formed against me all my family shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against me, all my family in judgment, we shall condemn. This is the heritage of the children of the Lord, and the righteousness is of me. Say the Lord shalom. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen.